Let's go ahead and finish up working with customers. We're working in Module 4 and this is going to be Section 1, Part 2. I want to show you how to go ahead and set up a new customer and a new job. You'll notice right above the customer list it says new customer and job and if you drop the list down there it'll say new customer. The first thing it asks you for is the name of the customer. I'm going to plug in Tom Allen as my new customer. Notice that I plugged in last name comma first name to keep the consistency with how they did it in this list here. The next thing you'll notice is a place to put in the opening balance. Let's say that Tom owed me $1,000 as of my company start date. My actual accounting would be correct, but I wouldn't have any way to go back and see that this was actually three separate invoices that total $1,000. I like to go back and put the invoices in and leave this blank. The first tab you see at the bottom is the address info. You'll notice here it has a place to put his company, his first and last name, and some other information. I'm going to say that Tom works for Smith Brothers. And let's say we plug in his name here. Here's a very common question. If I have Tom's name here, why do I need it here? QuickBooks will do mail merges with Microsoft Word. It'll pull from these fields, not this field here. So you do want to have that plugged in. I've got a place where I can put in Tom's job title, his phone, his fax, if he has a website, those types of things. And these fields can represent anything you want. You might have noticed as you started typing in his company name and his actual full name that it populated down here in this address details section. This is where if you're typing an invoice to Tom, it's going to pull this block onto his invoice. You'll need to click in here and set it up the way you'd like to see it. So you're going to be able to have in attention, Tom Allen, his address, and so on and so forth. If you actually ship items, Sometimes you might have a customer that wants a bill sent here and the shipping of the items to another place and you can ship it to a new address or you can copy the existing one over here. The next tab down is your payment settings and a lot of these fields are just informational. Some companies assign their customers account numbers. This is where you could plug that in. You may also want specific payment terms for this customer, so you can set those here. You can see that every customer can have different payment terms. Does this customer have a preferred delivery method? Meaning, do they like things emailed to them or mailed? I notice fax isn't on the list. I guess no one faxes anymore. Hmm. There's a preferred payment method. How does Tom prefer to pay you? Does he usually pay you with cash, visa? Here's a place to keep a customer's credit card number down here. This would be for a customer who buys from you on a regular basis and they just have asked you to keep their card number and file and charge it when they purchase something. I would never keep this information in here. You're liable as a company if someone gets into your computer and gets this information. So if you need this, just keep it somewhere else. You can set a credit limit for your customer over on the right. What would happen is if you set a credit limit and then you invoice them more than their credit limit allows, it will pop up and say, hey, they've exceeded the credit limit, would you still like to sell them something? And you could do that. You can also set up price levels for your customers. So if, for example, all of your commercial customers get a 10% discount, then you can choose Add New and set that up and give it a name, like commercial in this case, and it will automatically calculate that for you. Also, if you want to let your customers pay you online, you can choose either one of these. Now, we talked a little bit about this in the Preferences section. You would have to set this up with Intuit, but what would happen is when you actually email your invoice to your customer, it would have a place on there that says, click here to pay me, and they would click, and then it would allow you to put in this information. Okay, the next tab down says Sales Tax Settings. If you charge sales tax to your customers, this is where you can tell QuickBooks if this customer is a taxable customer or not. If this person is, which tax should they get charged? We're going to spend a lot of time on sales tax in a later module, but this is where you would set that up. And also the resale number. 
This is designed for, let's say that I sell chairs in my store and you sell chairs in your store. You can apply to your state for a tax exempt certificate, meaning when you buy them from me, you don't have to pay sales tax. And this is a place where I could just keep that information in case I get audited. The next tab is additional info. If you'd like to categorize your customers, notice they have commercial and residential customers here. Maybe you have sales reps in your organization. You can track which sales rep works with this customer. And these fields that you see over here, usually this is blank in QuickBooks because you create these yourself. You come down here to define fields. You type in the name of the field you'd like to create and then check off if you want that field to be available when you look at customers, vendors, or employees so you don't have to set it up three times. The last tab is your job info tab. Now when you're setting up a customer, that doesn't have anything to do with the job, so you wouldn't use it here. But this would be if it was a job, the description of the job, the type of a job, if you have job types, maybe the status of the job, the start date, projected end date, and the actual end date. Those are the things you'll need to set up when you create a new customer. I'm going to click OK and see if Tom Allen's in the list and there he is right there. One thing I've noticed in here, it doesn't put him alphabetical automatically. What you would need to do is click the heading right above the name. So click the word name and it resorts the list for you and you can see him down there alphabetically. Let me show you how to add a job for Tom. I'm clicked on Tom and I'm going to drop the list down and I'm going to say add job. And all you do here is give your job a name. I'm going to say it's a kitchen remodel job. You really don't have to fill in anything else here unless some of this happens to be different. You see it pulled the information from the actual customer. I'm going to click OK and now you'll see it's indented underneath Tom indicating that is a job for Tom Allen. That's how you set up customers and jobs. Oh, one more quick thing. When you go back to customer and job, you can add multiple customers and jobs at the same time. You're basically going to click here and then it's going to let you type in all the information about this customer and or job all the way across. If you had this list already in Excel, you could copy and paste this and that's how you would add multiple customers and jobs. It does not add their transactions, only the actual customer information. I'm going to close this and now we're finished setting up customers and jobs. What I'd like to do now is We've got customers set up, so now we can actually start estimating jobs. Let's go over into section two and I'll show you how to create estimates. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.